Defense Coordinator Lance Gidry will go straight into questions for Coach. So uh, Mario already mentioned that Cam Kitchens is full go now, and you know going up against Georgia Tech, one of their strengths is their passing game. So how important is it to have a guy like Cam back? Uh, so many ways, just his leadership. Um, can kind of fix things on the back end, make certain checks. So, uh, you know, just his presence. He's played a lot of football, and there's a lot of confidence in him uh, amongst coaches and players. So it's good to have him back. For Georgia Tech, for their passing game, uh, Haynes King seems to do doing a nice job there. What stands out about their entire offense? Uh, he's very athletic. He can run, uh, gets out of the pocket, makes things happen. Uh, he's got a strong arm. Um, so, know a little bit about him, know his daddy. Uh, his daddy's head coach at Longview, so it's a coach's son. Of course, he transferred from Texas a &M, so uh, he's playing well. He's done some good things, and uh, he's going to be a tall task. What's the biggest thing that you have focused on with your unit in the bye week now that you have a chance just to reset a bit after the dominant win at Temple? I uh, looked at some things that we made mistakes on through the last four games, corrected some of those things. Um, and then kind of dove into Georgia Tech with some depth, some things that they do well that create problems that you might have to make automatic checks to. So we got that out of the way last week, and now we're kind of fine-tuning some things going forward. But uh, they do a lot of good things offensively, try to get on the perimeter, and they throw the ball well, and they'll take some shots downfield. They got some guys that can really run, especially one of the wide receivers is really fast. So I think you've, you've gone against their OC in your past. Uh, do you remember that game, and do you feel like he's evolved since then, if you do? Um, you see a little bit of Georgia flair in him. I think he does what his kids can do. So, um, nah, I, it's, it's, he's a little different than he was before. Uh, I think the quarterback makes him go. Uh, they've really three guys on offense to me. Him, the running back, Haynes, is uh, talented. Um, really fast. He used to be a wide receiver that they're putting in the backfield. So he makes a lot of people miss and he gets out on the perimeter in the pass game. And then the wide receiver Singleton can really run. So we've got to be able to contain those three guys, offensive linemen, or I think they're a solid group. They work independently. I mean, they work together really well. I think movement uh, kind of last week got them a little bit against Bowling Green. Bowling Green played really hard last week. So um, you got to give them credit, and uh, but it's going they're going to be ready to play against us, I promise you. What did you learn about your safeties with Cam, how specifically maybe Jaden Harris, just the way he stepped up there? He had a lot of growing that he did, you know. Uh, he came in earlier in one of the games that uh, Cam, what, Cam wasn't hurt, and he didn't play great. But then when he became the starter and he was dependent upon, he did some good things. Uh, now he's got those games underneath his belt. He's got something to fall back on. Um, so he's made drastic improvements from a couple weeks. Now when he goes in with the twos, he's like a veteran now. So um, I really like the way he played. He plays with a lot of speed, and he filled in well. And J it, James took on a bigger role, you know, trying to help guide him. But I thought he did, did really well for us. Were there some similar strides maybe on the defensive line too where some guys got opportunities while guys were out to – Role in that regard. Yeah, kind of a next man up mentality. This spring, we were kind of like that too. We had a lot of the starters out in the spring, so they got a lot of reps, but it wasn't game reps. And these last two weeks, they've got their share. So kind of getting some of the guys back is good, but uh, those other guys got some good quality game reps, so we're going to need it down the stretch. Let's talk about the defensive line. Uh, Thomas Gore is doing very well on forced fumbles. Uh, I don't know, he seems to be playing efficiently. He doesn't have a lot of tackles, tackles but everything he does, it's turnover or whatever. You know, yeah. What, what's he doing well? Uh, he's a quick twitch guy. He's not very tall, uh, but he's very active. He played really, really well last year at Georgia State. You know, he was a good player. I think in the spring he was a little bit overweight. He cut some weight, so he's back down, got his quickness. And the other night he's played really well when he played against Temple. Uh, really active and uh, moving him is good for him, not staying stagnant. So hopefully those reps account, you know, for us down the line where we can play him more and more, but he filled in really well. Um, also, I wanted to ask you about tackling. Um, Coach Christopher said UM has improved a ton in tackling, uh, but that he said there's a long way to go. What are some of the things uh, that 
you've done to fix errors and who has impressed you in terms of tackling improvement? Uh, tackling is always a tricky one, you know, because you only get so many opportunities to tackle in fall camp. But I think the way you practice, you have to practice extremely fast. Not necessarily in between reps, but when you take a rep, it has to be full speed, playing with a lot of speed. So if you come to our practice, we have a ton of plays in, and we play really fast on defense. And I think you have to do that in order to play on Saturdays and play well. You can't do a lot of walkthroughs. You can't simulate the speed that way. So the speed of the scout team and the coaches that are coaching the scout team players have probably helped us with our tackling. And when you play fast, even though you're not tackling, you have to have good posture. You have to have bend in the knees and get a lot of people running to the football. So. You know, most of the time the missed tackles come from the back end. So because everybody sees the open field. The game is more spread than it used to be. Everybody talks about tackling day it and as good as it used to be back then. I know because people weren't lined up with two backs in the backfield and just coming straight ahead at you. Now the game is a perimeter game and you're getting athletes on athletes. So uh, I think the back end guys all have tackled well. TC's tackled well. Uh, Couch, I think Davis has tackled well. Porter has tackled well. So our corners and nickel guys have tackled extremely well. Safeties haven't missed a lot of tackles. I think our backers are tackling well. So. Um, usually, if you miss a tackle in the backfield by defensive line, a backer's right there to help him. But when you miss it in open field, there's nobody behind you. Obviously, Georgia Tech last week got, uh, got upset by Bowling Green. They were you know, heavy favorites and still you know, didn't play so hot. Uh, you guys have had three games so far against teams where you've been heavily favored. How do you, how do you make sure the defense is you know, ready to go and, and fired up for games like that? Hey, you just approach every game the same. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's the next opponent. and. You can't get caught looking ahead and sometime by the how big a team is for us, what conference they're in or what division they're in. You can't look at that. Every week is opportunity, and that's how we're kind of geared. I focus every day. Like, today was Monday. I've got to win Monday in my mind. Our players have to win Monday, and then we'll go to Tuesday. And you just go step by step by step. You go to Saturday, you try to keep everything as routine as possible, and then you go out there and play your best. And every day is opportunity uh, for you to play well and put something on video that the scouts like or the coaches like. And uh, so to me, it's very simple. Uh, you know, you just don't get caught up in all of that. You should never play up or down to your competition. Every game, you should be continuing to get better and better. Hey, Coach, I want to ask you about the passing defense. So I know you guys don't rank real high in yards allowed, but you've only given up three touchdown passes with four interceptions. You know, when you went over these first four games, you know, of tape, like, are you pleased with the, the passing game defense the way you want it to look? Have there been some areas where, you're like, you know, they have to get a little better? Like, what's sort of your overall take coming off the behind line? Uh, there's always areas of improvement. You know, when you miss a couple tackles in the open field and they turn into big plays, you know, if you give up. Uh, wheel routes out of the backfield, whoever cut them loose, and they get big chunks. And then sometimes it happens late in the games when you're playing younger guys. But when you go on the field, you represent Miami. But passing defense is kind of skewed sometimes. I always look at pass efficiency defense because that's the telltale. How many touchdowns you're giving up, how many interceptions you're getting, what's the quarterback rating. Because if we do our job at stopping the run, we're going to give up passing yards. And that's the way it is. Uh, but if your efficiency is good on defense, then you're playing well. So I don't look at necessarily yards that we give up in the past. I look at the efficiency. You're happy with the efficiency so far? Or? The efficiency is really good. The efficiency is a lot higher than the passing yards, of course. Uh, but that's kind of what you look at. But there's always areas of improvement. Sometimes there's guys open that the quarterback didn't hit him and it don't show up in the stat. So I look at what's real and what's not. So we got to do some things defensively to get better. But for the most part, I think the kids are improving each and every week. And that's all you want at this point. What is your assessment of how Leonard Taylor played in the, in the last game? Uh, he was explosive. Uh, last week was probably one of his better games. Um, you know, we, we try to mix guys in and out of there, but he got some pressures on some quarterbacks. So. Um, you know, he's, he's playing well. I think as we go through the season, he's going to get better and better because he's starting to trim up weight a little bit and the games are becoming more and more meaningful for him. And, uh, you know, when you get older as a player, you start looking at the schedule and you're like, dang, I only got eight games left. I only got seven, I only got six. So uh, I think he's on track to playing his best football at the end of the year. We'll do a few more for Coach. Coach, I'm not sure if someone asked this, so I'm sorry. Did anyone ask about Branson Dean and Messendor, Akeem Messendor? Um, how, how are they doing? They missed a game or two, whatever. 
when they're ready to play, they're ready to play. That's all I'm going to say. Well, sir, they are. <laughs> I'm not the doctor. Dean took some snaps today, so hopefully he's ready to go. And then the other things I asked Shannon Dawson is, um, how much difficult is it at this point of the season for game planning for you because of what other teams have seen the first four games? You try to tweak what you do. Uh, you look at down and distance. You look at the way you line up to certain things, and you always have to have something off of that. And uh, then sometimes you just do what you do, you know. So uh, you look at your third downs, third and medium, third and longs. What's been the worst down for you? Is it a third and medium compared to third and long, third and short? What is that? What are we doing? Can we do it better? Is it the player? Is it the scheme? Or is it we're not coaching it the right way? So you look at all those things, but you've got to constantly – change up your schemes and change up the way you do it to have better success. I know the focus is all at Georgia Tech this week, but when you have a bye week, and I know Mario's got you guys doing recruiting stuff and going everywhere, but any chance to channel serve, like look ahead to Clemson or Carolina, or is there somebody who's sort of in charge of the advanced scouting for you guys once you start? Yeah, I mean, you've got guys in the, you know, in the, in behind the scenes that are doing, they're advancing, what we call it. I don't even watch college football when I'm off. I might watch a certain game that interests me, but I don't, I swear, I don't look at an opponent that we're playing. I want to watch it on film because even on TV, you can't see really what you need to see. You're seeing it from the fan or the, the TV point of view, you know, and you just get ahead of yourself. I know a lot of times coaches ask, man, did you see the game? You know, the NFL, I don't watch football. When I get out of the office, I watch movies. It's like if you're a mechanic and all day, all you do is do mechanic work. Are you going to go home and watch a show on mechanic? No, you've got to clear your mind and some, or you will get burnt out. You have to. So I kind of do that. This weekend, I did just kind of flip through a couple games that was out of conference that I was interested in, but I've watched very little of it. I went to the movies. What kind of movies do you like? Me? Whichever kind my wife tells me to go to. What's yeah. the last one you watched? Uh, we went this weekend. We watched uh, uh, The Creation, The Creator, something like that. It was good. It was a really good movie. But every week, every Thursday, I try to go to a movie. I've oh. watched just about everything. Do you mind ever go to football in the middle of a movie? No. <laughs> <laughs> you have to 30-something years, you just kind of learn how to turn it off. And uh, I think having kids... Early in my career has helped me. You know, no win or no loss is ever too big when you come home and your baby just wants to hug you. You know, it kind of makes everything better. Now the kids are all grown up. Now I focus all my attention on my wife, you know, because I got to realize that we empty nesters, so my wife needs me. So I just turn off when I go home. I never bring my work home. When you move to the Miami area, how are you and your family enjoying being part of the community? Oh, we love it. The weather's good. Of course, we're from South Louisiana, so the weather is pretty warm, but it's not warm all the time like this. Um, we try to go to different restaurants. Uh, we cook a lot in the house, though. My wife's a great cook. I don't have time to cook, but I'm adjusting really well. I like it. I like the area. I like the type of kids. I like the people in this area. I like diversity, so I like it. Any restaurant come close to, to matching the Louisiana food for you around here? Or no. Going back to football, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> we are at work right now. <laughs> football, <laughs> Just football, nothing else. Yes, sir. Um, so a lot of talk has been around Jaden Davis and how he's been versatile in the hybrid nickel slot as well as playing safety. Yes, in what way do you notice his impact from being in Oklahoma prepare this team for the ACC in these first few weeks? I don't know. I don't know what he's done at, at Oklahoma. I don't know if there's any – there's going to be carryover from what he did. I didn't really ever watch what they did at Oklahoma, but I saw enough things by him that I said, that guy needs to come play for us. And I knew he could play nickel. I didn't know he was that intelligent, though. You don't know that on film, but, like, this guy's IQ is really high, and he's able to play multiple positions because of it. And uh, he's just got a lot of game reps, like Cam. And when you got a lot of game reps, you can fall back on things that's happened to you before. So he asks really intelligent questions, things that coaches would ask, and uh, that you know that he's really thinking about the game plan, what he's seeing on film, what he's seeing at practice. So when, you, when guys are like that, you listen to what they're asking, 
And then sometimes, like, well, what you think? Well, coach, I'm seeing this, boom, boom, boom. Okay, well, let's play it like this. Because they're intelligent as well. So, and sometimes they feel better at playing things a certain way. So, thanks, coach. Thank you.